All right, we're going to start off uh, with the casting process. And casting refers to any number of processes where we pour a liquid plastic into a suitable mold. Okay? So in our plastics lab, one of the materials we use is called this uh, polyester clear casting resin, which sounds just like that. We can make a clear plastic product. We can also add colored pigment to it to make a colored, uh, clear, transparent plastic product. Another casting process we'll do upstairs is called WEP water extended plastic, or more specifically water extended polyester. And WEP will also be catalyzed and make a product more like this. And notice these are not clear, it's a different material. I'll show you that video later. And another thing we can do with our clear casting material is do what's called an embedment, where we encapsulate an object uh, into our plastic. And we'll show you that video as well. So let's start off with casting of plastics. Some safety things here that are absolute uh, Hard and fast rule is, first and foremost, safety glasses. This here is our catalyst. Okay, this is methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, MEKP. You'll see that in a lot of catalyst bottles you'll see at the hardware store. What you need to know about this is it's gonna just start to deteriorate your eye tissue in four seconds. So if we're working upstairs and this happens to get in your eye and you weren't even casting, somebody else was, and something happened, the bottle dropped and splashed in your eye, it got in your finger, you touched your eye, you have four seconds to get down to the eye wash. Uh, that's a long distance in four seconds. You're probably going to hurt yourself. And very important that we have our safety glasses on. And I'm always going to wear um, some disposable vinyl gloves here whenever I'm dealing with um, any of these materials. Not only are they dangerous to get on my hands and into my eyes, but they're also hard to clean up and they're sticky. So I want to make sure I'm not going to get that on my hands. I can throw these away when they're done. So casting our plastics again means pouring into a suitable mold. Is my mold suitable? Does it have holes in it? Maybe somebody before me over catalyzed, which gives off a lot of heat. Is the mold warped? Is there plastic in the mold from somebody else? Do we need to clean that out of it? And so what I'm going to do right now is this mold that makes this soap dish. And this is a turtle soap dish that we can put in our bathroom to hold our soap. I'm going to pour into this side of the mold because we think about the negative space being our resulting product. Okay. So my mold is now suitable, and I want to pour out my measured amount of material. So I'm going to take my cup here, and I get a lot of questions. How much do I need? Uh, some molds need more than others. One trick I do is to fill this with water, and then very carefully try to pour the water in your cup to measure the volume of the mold. Some molds will have an um, indication on them as to ounces of material. This one does not. I know from experience that a three ounce pour should be enough for this mold. So I'm looking for my three ounce line, well this one goes to about two and a half. So essentially I'm going to try to fill this cup. So I'm going to open up my polyester casting resin. I want to pour this carefully as not to glug 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 and spill all over the place. So I'm going to let air back into the can as I pour this. And I'm just about going to get a full pour here. So now you can see I have almost a full cup which is just about three ounces. You can see that material it's kind of uh, you know, a little bit thicker. And what I want to do here is, again, be careful. I don't want to get this into my eyes. I'm going to take my eyedropper. I'm going to suction up some methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. And the rule of thumb here is 10 drops per ounce. So I have three ounces. We're going to do 30 drops. One, two, three, 28, 29, and 30. With my stir stick, I'm going to make sure I stir the catalyst through the column. Okay, so from top to bottom. I want to get that catalyst stirred all the way through the column. And some people ask, Olson, is this enough? I don't know. I know if you do more, it's not bad. Okay, so my catalyst has been fully mixed into my polyester casting resin. If I wanted a clear uh, casting, this would be a perfect time to pour this. I want to add a little bit of colored pigment to mine. If I add too much, there's no going back and taking it out. So let's add just a couple of drops at a time. One, two, three. Let's see how those three drops look when I mix this in. If I want it darker, I'll add a couple more drops. That's pretty transparent. I'm going to do three more drops. One, two, three. That's a total of six drops for this three ounce pour. And that's the color that I want. If you want darker, you would continue to add some drops. Just like our catalyst, we want to make sure that we 
incorporate that color all throughout the column of polyester casting resin. This is now ready to pour. My suitable mold is clean and ready to go. I'm going to gently pour right into the middle, nice and easy. And you can see the mold beginning to fill up with my material. Now occasionally you might notice your table is not the most level. And all of your material might be running to one end of your mold or another. When that happens, I'm going to use some popsicle sticks as shims. Put a few shims under one side of the mold to get the material to run evenly to the other side of the mold. So right there is a good spot now for me to stop, and this has to cure overnight. Okay, remember that casting that we did with our easy cast, clear casting resin? Well, here is the turtle that I poured. Now it's uh, had plenty of time to cure, so I want to gently just kind of twist the mold. The mold itself in this case is polyethylene, and one of the things about polyethylene is it is very bendy. Okay, or flexible. So I should be able to kind of work my way around and be able to remove my product from the mold. Now here is my soap dish and if you look there might be a very minimal flash. Okay, I don't have a lot of material that I need to get off of there. There is a sharp edge though. So I'm going to take some very fine sandpaper at an angle and just very carefully remove that sharp edge and I have a nice soap dish for in my bathroom or even better a paper clip holder for my desk. <laughs>